After Life of Grief. I am your host, Ginger Lou, and I'm going to be doing a quick roundup of the Genitive AI news. There's been lots going on, especially when it comes to government policy for big tech companies and for, uh, you know, to protect people as well as uh, businesses and consumers and etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a lot going on and it keeps changing all the time and it's different in depending on where you live I mean it's different in New York it's different in California it's different in U- the European Union it's different in the UK it's different in China um, so there's the you know AI has brought with it um, a lot of legal problems, especially with copyright as well, which um, as if you've listened to my podcast before, um, I do talk a lot about copyright because I am a creative. And so, yes, it's great to see all this new technology like AI. I mean, it's, you know, the the horse has left the stables, as it were. I mean, it's, it's here to stay. Um, you know, we can't stop it. Two years ago, um, we were still talking about it being novel and this amazing thing. But uh, myself and others were also a bit wary about what was going to happen to people like myself and creatives. And of course, that thing has happened to the extent that big tech companies are trying to change copyright laws. Uh, Well, of course they are. You know, Um, of course, these big tech companies publicly um, are saying that they want to protect artists um, but of course they've been scraping all our work and as much as I like to write about this stuff and you know uh, it it is the inevitable and and yes and all that um, it's still as an artist when you've put in a lot of work and then you see somebody who isn't an artist who just takes your work and then puts it in a little bit with mix with AI and then claims it as their own you know it's put people out of work um, it isn't good and it just leaves a bad taste in the mouth I mean copyright was our protection copyright for anything that you write your artwork your photographs your film intellectual property was and I'm saying was because, uh, as I said, big tech companies are trying to change the rules, trying to change the laws so that we don't have any protection for our work anymore. And it is a sad day. So I'm hoping, you know, there's lots of court cases with authors. There's been a big one, lots of big authors who, who know that they're, uh, who, who found that their work has been scraped Um uh, by these AI companies and then anyone can use the work uh, it isn't on is it, uh, it uh, and also you know uh, what happened to human creativity and originality um, but there will be a backlash and there is a backlash coming on now um, you know not everybody um, you know reads books online um, we, th- we thought that it would be the end of books, physical books as we know it, but that's not the case. People write, read physical books. Um, AI was supposed to be the, the end of photography. It's not the end of photography, of course. Uh, for, you know, everybody says it's the end of photography after, after each ever revolution, but it's not. Um, and of course, when, you know, when things progress and technology gets better, of course there's always going to be job losses. But there's also going to be job gains. But this is different. This is totally different. This is getting rid of nearly every creative field that you could imagine. If you, you know, you've got the you know, big newspapers like the New York Times and others who have lay, laid off a lot of staff, um, you know, because you can get AI to do it. Let's, you know, let's, let's create a blog with AI. We don't need, we don't need, need humans to do it. We don't need photographers to, to to take photographs of things um you know you see it in in videos and in, in the corporate world especially so gosh if I was making my living out of event photography or 
or event videos or you know corporate videos things like that I would be out of business now because there are platforms where you can just you know curate an avatar to presentation um, create videos from from text Um, so that's all you know so we all have to evolve of course but you know in the past when you know, things have changed, technology has changed things. We would evolve and move on to something else. But this is a whole new ball game because it's replacing everything. How are we supposed to, you know, what kind of jobs are going to be left for us? So it is a scary thing. Um, and the protections are, are being messed with by big tech companies. You know, these same big tech companies who don't pay their taxes in places like the UK because, you know, they, they fiddle about and, you know, they have, they have their address in some other country and all this kind of stuff. You know, um, these big tech companies who want a monopoly of everything um, so that you can't compete with them. Um, so the European Union has put up some, you know, um, prosecuted if some some big California techs for for that very reason for you know um, breaking competition rules so um, you know with all this crazy innovation um, you know there's people's lives people's jobs are at hand anyway I'm going on I was supposed to be telling the news and so here I go um, before I go on any further about my gripes about it all um in the generative ai news roundup it's a win-win for the estates of some of the hollywood's biggest 20th century stars while the digital replica act aims to prevent ai generated replicas of artists without prior consent there's a new death tech company that has a hefty fee and jackie chan is the latest actor to be de-aged the AI Copied Act is here and video content platforms have issued label warnings. So this is just some of the news that's out now. So Hollywood stars have new IP life with AI. I was griping before about, um, uh, you know, the IPs, it's just intellectual property um, being taken away by big tech companies, by the power of big tech, tech companies. But also um, there's money in it for those who own the estates of famous celebrities. The, the biggest Hollywood stars of the 20th century are reaching a new audience with the help of generative AI. Actress Judy Garland's voice has been AI generated for the wonderful Wizard of Oz audiobook. Of course, this is after permission and a good IP deal between the star's estate and AI company Eleven Labs, who plan to also recreate the voices of James Dean and Burt Reynolds for its new reader app. The new app generates AI voiceovers for articles, newsletters, ebooks, and other text content. The venture between Eleven Labs and Hollywood Estates sets a precedent for IP licensing and future collaborations with families of dead celebrities. So, you know, Eleven Labs has done the right thing. They've made these deals. Uh, well, they would have been sued otherwise because there's a lot of um, bandits, cowboys out there who are trying to steal uh, other people's IP, celebrities' IP, um, and and the less the less famous taking our work, taking our content, taking our audio, our video, our writing uh, without our permission. Uh, where before we used to have a copyright to say, well, this is my copyright, you can't do it. But now you can, you know, fiddle with it and say, oh well, it's AI generated. I didn't steal it. Um, so this is what we're dealing with. SAG-AFTRA thanks California AI artist protection legislation. California unanimously um, passed the Digital Replica Bill, which protects deceased celebrities' IPs from non-consensual digital replication for profit. The Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, SAG-AFTRA, thanked the California Senate judiciary for passing the California Digital Replica Bill which is AB1836, if you're in California, uh, which aims to provide IP protection for the state's deceased performers. If it passes into law, it would stop the unauthorized use of deceased artists' images, likenesses, or voices in film, television, and music, which I was just talking about. But, you know, there is no protection for those who aren't famous, who don't have money, 
you know, the, the little people out there, of course, um, who create content, create whatever kind of content or whatever, just to make a living, aren't famous, aren't rich, just getting by. Their stuff can, is going to be taken, stolen um, and regurgitated with AI uh, with no protection. So um, this is what we're up against. Hollywood teams with Holocaust Museum LA to launch augmented reality APP. Um, I really want to have a look at this. Uh, it's very interesting. A collaboration between Hollywood and the Holocaust Museum. Los Angeles has created an augmented reality app which can reimagine the lost history of victims of the Nazi Germany regime. Technology studio Magnipus, whose team created the Oscar-winning movies The Curious Case of Benjamin Button and Hugo, has teamed with the Holocaust Museum LA to create an education app that uses augmented reality to recreate the Sobivore concentration camp. After World War II, the camp was dismantled and trees was planted to cover the site where 170,000 people had been exterminated. The Sobivore AR exhibit is free to download from Apple. Now, um, this is just reminding me because when I, re when I read this, I thought, well, this is great um, without actually knowing um, what it was, because I thought, well, because uh, I actually read it as, well, it's an an area that was before, you know, a place before the concert, before the Nazis, before the concentration camp, of people in life, you know, which had been destroyed and are no longer here. So I thought they were recreating that to keep their memories alive. But then as you read on, it's actually, no, you're they're recreating the concentration camp and I'm thinking well why would you want to do that why would you remember want to remember people suffering and dying in a concentration camp um so I'm sorry I don't think uh that's how we want to remember yes it, you, I know why they're doing it so so things like that don't happen again but I thought it was like I said I thought it was going to be a reenactment of a life that's been, you know, a villages, village life, um, communities um, that have been destroyed forever. Um, and I thought they were bringing that back to life, but it, it's fine. Um, AI death tech company Eternus creates digital replicas of the dying. You know that I'm particularly interested in this subject because I, I research it. AI startup Eternus has, cr has created a digital replica of terminally ill startup entrepreneur Michael Bomber, uh, Robert Lucasio, CEO, and AI legacy platform Eternus teamed up with his friend Bomber to recreate a first for the company. The AI version of Bomber was created by Eternus with an in house AI model and external large language models such as OpenAI and Meta. Eternus records. Uh, uses speakers, sorry, rec uh, records uses speaking up to 300 phrases and compresses the information through a two-way computing process that captures Brahma's voice. The AI system can be trained further to answer questions about their lives and personalities. Great, let's have a go. Let's do all do it. Uh-oh, no, well, no, it's, it's uh, $15,000 to set up and can tell stories and answers questions about a person's life without repeating pre-recorded answers. The AI voice is legally treated as an asset and belongs to the person who created the AI voice, which can be passed down to family members. Now, a lot of this information, this news uh, item about Michael Bomber, um, I was interviewed by AP News um, in conjunction with this, the same article, um, which was to do with my research on AI death tech and stuff. Um, but yeah, that one that's going to cost fifteen thousand uh, bucks. If you want to have a go at that, well, I hope it's worth it. Um, no opt out for Meta artists in Latin America, but Brazil fights back. Latin American artists cannot opt out of prohibiting Meta from using their public data on Facebook and Instagram. The region lacks the data protection laws that would prohibit Meta from using their content. To add insult to injury, the company did not notify its users in Latin America, which means personal content, such as family photographs and videos, can be scraped by Meta's AI models. 
Artists are also vulnerable because their work is often promoted on Meta's platforms. What have I just been saying? Meta announced last September the launch of AI features source from mind content from its platforms. Any publicly shared po posts on Facebook and Instagram were fair game for use as training data for its generative AI models. Most of Meta's global customers had the option to opt out of having their content used in this way. However, uh, Brazil has forced Meta to suspend the use of its AI assistant in the country after Brazil's National Data Protection Authority banned Meta from training AI models on the personal data of its Brazilian users. Come on, man. When, since when do California tech companies become all this more powerful than God? You know, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, yes, it's, you know, and in the name of what innovation? Yes, it's great to have all this innovation, etc. But what about our data? I mean, do you really want your personal pictures of your relatives um, being scraped to be used by somebody else? I mean, and what would happen if you saw your dead mother or your dead father, um, you know, their image being used by an artist somewhere? Uh, you know, on the other side of the world. And by the way, you wouldn't be able to do anything about it. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. You know, this is, it, it just makes a fool of copyright. Anything that you put online, yes, they're, they're going to say about, well, it's fair use, et cetera, et cetera, it's fair use. Um, it just makes a whole, a mockery of the whole, whole, whole thing. It really is, you know, because, because back when, before AI, you know, the thing of fair use you know, you knew you you kind of knew that somebody wasn't going to use your 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 pictures of your family, right? I mean, why would they? And uh, you know, they wouldn't dare to. Well, let's. Well, you're an artist. I'm just going to take one of your photos or take one of your uh, drawings, and I'm going to use it for my own. The, you know, they didn't want to get into some um, copyright um, argument, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, but. You know, the hide behind fur used to do this so that they can take all your all your stuff. Um, it is it's not on. Um, AI copied act would protect artists and journalists content. See the theme here. It's the same theme here. The copied act. Let's read it out. Content origin protection and integrity from edited and deep fake media act. Try saying that fast would make the removal of digital watermarks illegal. The idea of watermark protection was introduced as a way to detect and authenticate AI-generated content and protect artists and journalists from having their work scraped by AI models without permission. Content owners such as newspapers, broadcasters and artists could sue AI companies if it found their content has been used to train AI models. The Copied Act would, give, would guide the National Institute of Standards and Technology to create guidelines and standards to prove the content origin and detect if it has been de recreated by AI. It's, you know, the copy that has come about because uh, big, big AI companies have said that, no, we're not scraping X, Y, and Z. And then it's been found out that they have been doing it, um, you know, which they say, oh, we don't know, it's by accident. Yeah, they're lying, basically. Video platforms enforce AI content labeling. Vimeo, TikTok, YouTube have created AI content labels as a way of creators to label AI generated content. Creators must now disclose the origin of realistic content if it is created with AI. This is to ensure that AI created or manipulated synthetic humans aren't mistaken for real humans, events or places. Advanced generative AI tools make it increasingly difficult to distinguish between real and fake content. I first noticed the new terms and conditions after watching a Fat Boy Slim video called Role Model, which shows famous icons past and present, AI lip syncing to the lyrics of the song. So when I looked at this video um, after hearing the song at a festival, um, it's all lip sync, famous people, I think. Um, God, don't ask me who. <laughs> so many of them that are in uh, that are in this video, and um, yeah. But then you know, on the actual uh, 
page underneath the UTA, YouTube, under the video, the text says about this has been recreated by AIs, if you didn't know, but, um, but yeah. Sony Pictures CEO aims to cut costs with AI. CEO of Sony Pictures Entertainment, Tony Vinciquera, announced major changes to upcoming film and TV shows during an investor event. The cost-cutting solution, according to Vinciquera, is investing in AI technology. This comes after the Hollywood strikes last year by writers and actors who expressed concerns about being replaced with AI. The concern here is that Sony and other producers will bypass human actors, writers and artists. However, I guess that the result will be to devoid of human creativity, that there will, there will be a massive backlash, which I just mentioned before. I mean, have you seen, have you, you know, they've, there, there's some research that's come out um, where they've asked a set of people saying, no, I don't, why would I want to see a film completely re, um, created by AI you know I mean that's cheating it's not only cheating but it's like there's no human creativity so a lot of people don't and of course that can change um, as you know as we see more and more of this happening of course um, but um, you know I mean have you seen these websites now that um, you know for, for the content of you know, blog posts, articles and stuff, that instead of using stock photograph imi in images, they're using AI images and they look terrible, they look absolutely or horrible. And it's like, why? Your website looks, you know, your online publication looks horrible now. Use real photographs. You know, they think it's cool. It's great. It looks terrible. Every time I look at it, it's like, it, it just looks so horrible. Um, so get some stock photos, for God's sake. Artists protect work from generative AI theft. Researchers from the University of Chicago have created two programs to protect artists' work from AI model data mining. Glaze and Nightshade poison the source of art uploading online in an attempt to scramble what the AI model sees. Glaze changes an image so that the AI system sees it as a different art style. While Nightshade is a more forceful tool that attempts to confuse the AI training model to stop it from accurately identifying an image, the tools hope to provide a safeguard against AI tools using content illegally, some of which are located in countries with limited or no regulation. Artists and writers have been in constant battle with big tech companies like OpenAI and Microsoft, res resulting in lawsuits and government regulation. Hopefully that will do something, but I, I'm going to presume that the AI uh, tool um will evolve like a disease right um you know like a you know how a, an infection how how something you know evolves you know when you're you when your own body defenses attack it then it it evolves into something else and fights back so i can see that happening for sure Jackie Chan is the latest actor to get AI de-aged treatment. Hollywood has created a de-aged Harrison Ford, Tom Hanks and Robert De Niro with some success, but the latest Jackie Chan movie has caused fans to complain about the dodgy technology. The 70-year-old stars in a legend, or a legend, a sequel to his 205, 2005 movie, The Myth. However, his appearance has been altered by AI to resemble someone in his 20s, and the result, according to fans, is less than convincing. Director Stanley Tong Kui Lai takes a different view and believes that AI de-aging provides longevity to an aging actor's career. Fans of Chan argue that the de-aging actors lack authenticity and even direct their disappointment at the Hong Kong actor for agreeing to the role. I mean, you know, come on just employ a young actor um it, you know um and you know when especially when we know the actor's 70 he's 70 and you're trying to pretend that he's 25 either make an animation or don't do it at all okay here's some bite-sized news before i go fashion brand mango creates campaign with ai also replacing photographers illustrators models you know, videographers, photographers, etc., etc., etc. Whole of that employment is gone. And Mango created a fashion campaign with photorealistic AI-generated content. The images are in 
they're in our a mix of real photographs and generative AI. How long before real photographers are ditched for AI models? It's happening already. CNN will lay off 100 staffers to be replaced by AI. It is another sad day in the life of news content platforms with the announced layoff of 100 staffers at the cable news channel CNN. CEO Mark Thompson sent a memo announcing his plans to create digital products behind a paywall and a push into AI. Well, it's not hope that memo about um, you losing your job didn't go out in a memo. Um, but they, these big companies do send out an email um, saying bye-bye. Research finds generative AI supports creativity but hinders originality. Researchers at the University of Exeter Business School and UCL School of Management found that writers using generative AI platforms to create story ideas were more creative, but the output was narrow in scope. In other words, generative AI platforms are good at bouncing off ideas of the human, but not so good at creating original content. Tell us something we don't know. Yes, obviously, we've all had a go. I've had a go. Um, you know, the content that it creates is flowery. Um, it, you can tell that it's been written by something like ChatGPT. It's not real. Um, it's just, it's got no personality. There's, you know, and it's regurgitated stuff. It it's, uses language that you just wouldn't use. It uses the same repeated words that you can tell. You can tell on you know, uh, some articles, um, you know, which words that, th that it's been written by a AI because they use the same, the same words. Um, but yes, I do agree. It is good to uh, bounce off ideas, um, especially if you're, you know, if you're um, someone who works on, the, on their own in their art occasionally, um, sometimes or often, um, um, certainly I do, and you haven't got that uh, other person to bounce ideas off, or you're in early stages and you don't want to get out there, then it is good at bouncing ideas. You know, what about this? What about that? Um, but the thing is, I suppose you've got to think, well, well maybe that you're just bouncing the same ideas off, off that everybody's bouncing off, and then everybody comes up with the same idea. And then is it your idea, or is it actually your idea, or is it the idea of the AI? How can you... Uh, anyway, um, that is the gender of AI news. Um, it's not good news. None of it. I think all of that was depressing. Uh, I didn't mean it to be, but these are the news items that interest me, and they're they're all connected. They're all related about the sorry state of um, people working in the creative industries, um, and you know, and personal data privacy etc um you know it was not meant meant to be a downer uh you know of the news it's just the state that everything is in um but hey it's new technology woohoo anyway that is it uh please join me now